Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, August 14th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. We're still tracking the same two storms we've been tracking all week, Fred in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, and newly named Tropical Storm Grace, which is quickly approaching the Leeward Islands today. And as we've been doing in previous videos, we'll start with Fred first and then talk about Grace in several minutes. This is the close-up loop on the visible of Fred, or what NHC is now calling the remnants of Fred. The circulation got really ill-defined as it crawled along the north coast of Cuba over the last couple of days, and this has been a real mess to try to track. And we've expected it to be disorganized, but this disorganization has caused some difficulty in the forecasting, and the result has been actually a little bit of a shift in where Fred is located, where what we're now seeing is kind of a consolidation north of the western tip of Cuba, which is a little bit to the southwest of where it was originally expected to be, which was closer to the Florida Keys and southwestern Florida. So we've seen a shift in organization a little bit to the west, and at the moment, there's not a really well-defined circulation, but you can see some semblance of rotation here. Strong southeasterly wind, light westerly wind coming into the western tip of Cuba. And so you can kind of get an idea that there's some rotation in here, although it's not super compact at the moment. One of the difficulties for the system has been the fact that its surface rotation has been displaced from the mid-level rotation, which is still sitting back here over the central and western part of Cuba, whereas the surface level rotation is way over here. So these two are still offset from one another, and this has been one of the main difficulties in FRED becoming organized. Additionally, we can see some evidence of dry air with arc clouds emanating toward the west out from these thunderstorms. You can see that they go up, and then they quickly die and start fading away, and we have outflow at the surface racing outward. And that's a sign of dry air getting sucked in, causing the thunderstorms to die, which is a suppressing effect on tropical development. That said, it does seem that as Fred has slowed down and kind of milled around in this area, it is starting to show signs that it could reorganize somewhere here north of western Cuba over the next day or so, and there is still an expectation that Fred will be able to redevelop into a tropical depression or storm and eventually head off here toward the northwest, which has been the general expectation for a while now. Here's the water vapor loop showing what Fred has been facing for the last few days. This upper level low to the north continues to gradually weaken and shrink in size, and that has been imparting some wind shear on Fred out of the southwest for the last few days, and that's one of the reasons the surface low and the mid-level rotation are offset from one another, as we just discussed. The wind shear causes that to happen. Now at the moment, this upper low is starting to move out of the picture over the next day or so. However, the shear will not go away entirely as we now have in general an upper level ridge centered over Cuba at this point in time, but Fred is on the western side of this ridge aloft and so southerly flow or southwesterly flow over top of the system is likely to remain during the course of its life over the Gulf of Mexico. We can see this on the GFS Ensemble forecast. This is for early Monday morning or during late Sunday night, depending on your perspective, showing where Fred is expected to be eventually moving toward the northwest. And you can see this ridge that I just highlighted still anchored to the east of the system. So there's still southerly flow aloft. Over top of it, still some shear. This is likely to be the primary inhibitor for Fred getting significantly strong as it comes north. We could see some redevelopment. Uh, but it's unlikely to be a rapid kind of strengthening situation. However, there are signs that this could be a bona fide storm on arrival to the North Gulf Coast, still expecting some kind of approach to the Western Florida Panhandle. This is the H4 forecast showing the simulated radar image showing a bona fide tropical storm, and you can see it's still dry on the southwest side because there's that shear we talked about, but you can see that there could be something with plenty of rain to the north and east of the center with strong rain bands, and in this kind of situation, even isolated tornadoes and bands like this are possible. So Florida Panhandle likely to see some kind of significant weather event going into around the Monday time frame. The National Hurricane Center forecast has this arriving around Monday evening, of note is that this track has shifted west a little bit. This used to be farther to the east, closer to Apalachicola not too long ago. Because of Fred's disorganization, like I said, it was supposed to be closer to the Keys. It is a little bit farther southwest, so the track has accordingly just shifted a bit to the west here. And this is hopefully locked in now a little bit better than it was a couple of days ago now that we can see signs that Fred is starting to reconsolidate in this new area here. 
but the general idea continues to be similar to what we've been talking about for the last couple of days. Primary heavy weather will be north and east of where the system tracks, not so much on the west side here. So if you're in Louisiana, unlikely at this point to see significant weather, probably the same for Mississippi Gulf Coast, given that the east side will be the heavy side. So right now it's really still focusing on the Florida Panhandle, southern Alabama, and southern Georgia in terms of heavy rainfall, a swath of which is expected to move up into this region over the next few days. And this is now shifting, fortunately, away from the Florida Peninsula. A lot of the heaviest rain was farther east when the track was farther east over the peninsula. Now that's being limited to the Florida Keys area and the immediate southwestern coast of Florida in the current forecast. But more heavy rain into the panhandle could occur as a result of this slight westward shift in track. So do uh, stay safe, be ready for the potential for flash flooding. That'll be the main impact here. Not expected to be a tremendous wind event, but wind gusts over tropical storm force, that is over 40 miles per hour, are very possible as Fred is expected to regain tropical storm strength prior to reaching the Gulf Coast. Okay, we're gonna shift gears now and move from Fred over to our new storm, Tropical Storm Grace, that was formerly known as Invest 95L and is now approaching the Leeward Islands. Here's a close-up loop of the storm this morning. And this is a still fairly disorganized system from what we can tell. There is a lot of convection here, but it doesn't have a lot of structure. And it appears that whatever low-level center exists is likely tiny. It's hard to find it. If we look at visible imagery, we'll see that there's a lot of southerly flow here, south flow there, south flow west of Barbados. It's all south southerly flow. We're not really seeing westerly flow wrapping around, so we don't have a big circulation which would be a sign of health. So at this point, this is still looking kind of disorganized. If there is a westerly wind, it's probably buried in a small area to the east of this burst of thunderstorms. I can show you the radar loop out of the Lesser Antilles, and you'll see all of the convection going off to the south of the system. But again, it's all south, south directed flow here. If we look up a little bit to the north, we'll see just a little bit of an evidence of a curly Q here in the radar shape. And that could be where at least the mid-level center of grace is. There could be a small surface circulation under this, but there have been no direct observations underneath of it yet. So if there is west wind, it's likely confined to a very small area here, and we may have just a tiny circulation racing toward Guadalupe over the next few hours, but there is no well-organized circulation over the broader area as of yet. Recon data from the aircraft that has been flying around in there has not found a whole lot, and similar to the satellite observations I just showed you, not a lot of westerly wind being found in here. The assumption is that there is some kind of circulation here. I'm not sure why the plane did not sample this particular region, but that's the area on radar that looked most likely to have the center. You can see there's tropical storm force winds in green and dark blue there on the north side, but we do not yet know if the system is closed. Either way, it won't matter a whole lot for impacts to the Leeward Islands as uh, wind gusts to tropical storm force could occur today and tonight as the system rolls through but the overall uh, state of the system is one of disorganization still. Now here's the water vapor loop of the environment, and we talked in the last video about how Grace had been struggling with easterly wind shear due to this flow aloft out of the east, which you can see Grace is now moving out of. It was back here a day or two ago. It is now moved west and is starting to remove itself from this belt of easterly flow to the south. And we talked about how there may be a break in the wind shear that could allow Grace to organize further. And that's kind of what's happening. Although we just described Grace as disorganized, it is healthier than it was a couple of days back when we could not even see much convection over the center. Now we have more centered convection and the system is slowly acquiring a more developed look, although it is still weak. Now as it continues to the west-northwest, the shear is going to come back eventually due to some troughing to the north that's going to bring westerly flow aloft that is going to start shearing grace out of the other direction, out of the west or out of the north, and things are going to get complicated really quickly here. In the short term, the intensity forecast seems like it's not going to consist of rapid development considering that grace still doesn't look like it has the structure to rapidly intensify so as it moves toward puerto rico could pass over the island or very close to it 
Right now, National Hurricane Center forecasts intensification to 60 mile per hour max winds. Right now, it's estimated Grace has 45 mile per hour max winds. A little bit of intensification is possible here, especially if that little center on radar is an actual surface circulation. Until we know that, though, a little difficult to say, but unlikely to see significant ramp up in winds as this approaches Puerto Rico, but expect the potential for winds as high as 60. Now, as this goes forward from there, we've got land interaction with the Greater Antilles to think about, and there's also environmental struggles ahead for grace. If we look at the GFS forecast for upper level flow, this is a representation that kind of outlines the upper level troughing to the north in orange colors here. And then Grace is shown over western Puerto Rico on the model as a ball of purple contours, which show low level rotation. And so we can kind of see where the storm is in relation to the upper level troughing. Now on the GFS, this comes over western Puerto Rico by early Monday morning, eastern time. And as this comes west, a couple of things happen. One is this trough starts imparting westerly shear, as I noted, and the other is the land interaction. And as we go forward, the GFS happens to move the storm just along the northern coast of Hispaniola, so not a full land interaction, not a full passage over the island like Fred had. But we then get this direct interaction with this trough, which starts thinning out. And what typically happens when a tropical cyclone like Grace starts interacting with a trough like this it's very sensitive to exactly how strong Grace is at this moment. Because if Grace is healthy and generating a lot of thunderstorm activity, it starts to generate this blue bubble here, heat release aloft, outflow aloft, that starts to thin out this trough and weaken the trough. And if the storm is resilient enough, eventually it could fracture this trough into pieces and Grace could be left behind in a more favorable environment. So for example, here you'll see two pieces of orange kind of split as grace moves in between and this trough eventually will cease being a negative influence on the storm suppressing its intensity however if grace is in a fragile state as it currently is by the time it gets to this point then the trough could just kill it through wind shear being too much for the storm to hold together and if it's moving over hispaniola at the same time we could just see grace dissipate entirely during this time frame now this is obviously a sensitive forecast because a difference of 50 miles could determine whether it moves over Hispaniola or not. It doesn't take much to make a big difference there. And right now, we just talked about how Grace is kind of still disorganized and where it could be tiny, it could be fragile, it could get stronger, uh, but it could also be very weak by the time it arrives at Puerto Rico. So there's uncertainty in how robust the vortex will be as it's interacting with both the islands and the upper level trough. So the bottom line is there's some uncertainty here in the intensity forecast for Grace going forward. Now the track in general we expect to be generally toward the west northwest. This is the GFS low level flow. There's Fred, here's Grace nearing Puerto Rico on Sunday morning. And you'll see that the low level high pressure system is centered right about here. So you get a ridge shaped like this. And so we have east southeast flow helping to direct Grace in the general direction of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. And that is well forecast. However, the difficulty here is that the mid-level ridge is shaped a little bit differently. So if you go up to 500 millibars, which is about 10,000 feet higher up, you can see that the ridge is oriented more north to south. And so we actually have northeasterly steering flow in the mid-levels impacting grace. So low-level flow out of this direction, mid-level flow more out of the northeast. This represents a wind shear on the system, but it also represents competing steering factors. So if Grace gets strong near Puerto Rico, the storm could actually turn more toward the west, putting it more likely over Hispaniola, which could then end up killing the system in turn. If the system is weaker, perhaps it sneaks to the north of the islands and then gets stronger later if it finds more favorable conditions farther west. So again, some complications here with the intensity forecast, but in terms of impacts, the general track, whether it's north of or over the islands, is likely to bring heavy weather to both Hispaniola and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, and we're likely to see at least heavy rainfall and gusty winds. At the moment, again, the system is still fairly disorganized, not expecting you know hurricane force winds or anything in these islands, but tropical storm force winds are certainly possible, and right now the National Hurricane Center has a maximum intensity of about 60 mile per hour max winds by Sunday afternoon when it arrives in the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico area. Tropical storm force warnings in blue are in effect for all of these islands north and west of Guadalupe. And we have watches for the Dominican Republic with the track forecast being very close to or over that country. 
and then continuing generally west northwestward kind of reminds you of Fred this kind of track and Fred was almost destroyed entirely by passage over Hispaniola it remains to be seen whether Grace will also take the same journey it will be something to watch carefully just in case something organized pops out over water on the other side in which case there will be concerns for significant impacts to the Bahamas Cuba and Florida but I would say right now there's a lot of unanswered questions during the next 48 hours or so. We need to get it to this area near Hispaniola before we will have very many answers about what could happen farther down the road. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.